it was definitely a culture shock because I was like, I don't know, I was one year old when, you know, 2008 was around. So uh, I didn't know how to use a flip phone at all. Uh, I didn't know I had to press the button three times to get to like a certain letter or something. So I was really confused on how to type at first, which was funny because this guy gave us flip phones to practice typing with. And the whole time I was just so confused and I was wondering why I was so slow all the time. These two are the stars of our movie. Isaac, Shirley, they are not first time actors. They're amazing seasoned professionals and so fun to be around, Stop. so fun to work with. I would, I would, I would say eh on professional. <laughs> and I would say eh on eh. fun to hang out with. But I think it was that kind of balance that I wanted to try and straddle, which was, I think the, the seed of this idea really was, you know, I was really inspired by coming of age classics that I love, like Stand By Me, which I think to this day is one of the sort of the seminal movie about adolescent boyhood that uh, treats adolescent boyhood as crass and loud and raw and honest and vulnerable and emotional as kids really are. And, but have a movie like Stand By Me, but have it star people who looked and talked and felt like the kids that I grew up with, which, you know, we're Asian American kids, but Asian American kids of sort of all different cultures, you know, Taiwanese American, Korean American, um, Vietnamese American, and even, you know, like Pakistani American, Bangladeshi American. And so I knew I really wanted to cast hyper specifically to those cultures. And just when I think of the landscape of um, the entertainment industry, and and maybe I also don't know all of it, but I I had this thought that you know I think a lot of the kids that you know who may be the right fit for this movie, maybe they aren't you know they're not at an agency. They're maybe like at a skate park. They they haven't thought about acting. You know that's not except for this guy. <laughs> He's incredible. Um, and and so, and Shirley found her at a skate park. Yeah, um, obviously, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but it was that sort of ethos that kind of drove the movie, which was trying to find kids that felt like real kids. And so our casting directors, Natalie Lynn and Afisa Captanwala, you know, they, they did, we kind of went the street casting route and we casted a lot of kids who had never acted before, who were just so electric and charismatic and undeniable and kind of brought them into our movie. And I think, I, I do strongly believe that even though our movie takes place in the late 2000s, you know, Isaac was saying this yesterday so eloquently in our Q&A that the experience of being a teenager, the experience of being 13 and 14 years old, that those insecurities, those anxieties, um, they're, those feelings are the same. Um, they're just contextualized differently. You know, we just brought in sort of real 13, 14 year olds, I think, every child or child I think is that a good thing to say? Yeah. every young actor in the movie that isn't Isaac or Shirley are first time non-actors who are just incredibly again like undeniably charismatic electric and all we had to do was just be like hey come here and play this is all for you and you mentioned that obviously a lot of the emotions of what it's like to be a teen are the same no matter what year it was but there's also some like really specific stuff to 2008 and the mid odds in this. And I'm curious for you guys, what like su struck you about that era and what was like shocking or surprising or funny to you? I also imagine like the idea of like an AIM screen name and T9 texting and all of that was very foreign to you. I mean, I feel like not as much for me because I got a little taste of it, but I definitely feel like for the kids on set, they were like, let's play around. But we had this amazing thing where like production let us take photos with cameras and put those up on our uh, on our bedroom walls. And my favorite thing was Sean sent me a playlist of all these wonderful songs. And so I would jam out to Misery Business by Paramore and Crush, Crush, Crush constantly before it takes. It was, it was weird pretending to use MySpace because I had no idea what MySpace was, right? Which is, which is, I guess, sad, kind of. But yeah, MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> for, MySpace. for MySpace. For MySpace, Tom. Shout out wherever you are. <laughs>